On this episode, I have a very special real-world head-to-head comparison for you. I have a pickup truck, a brand new one, Ram, and an SUV version of that truck. It's a brand new 2022 Grand Wagoneer. I'll explain how they are related in a bit, but I'm gonna do highway towing, MPG efficiency testing, zero to 60 loaded and unloaded with and without the trailer, head to head coming up right now. The pickup truck is a brand new 2022 Ram 1500 Hemi V8. It's a 5.7 liter. It has the e-torque mild hybrid system and it has a towing capacity of upwards of 11,000 pounds. And the SUV is this all new 2022 Grand Wagoneer with a bigger Hemi V8. This is a 6.4 liter V8 powered beast. And it has a frame, a fully boxed chassis, very similar to the one underneath the Ram 1500. And this SUV, this full size luxury SUV can tow up to 10,000 pounds. So let's see how they tow. All right guys. I'm going to set the benchmark for this comparison in this Ram 1500 with a 5.7 liter Hemi. I'm in tow haul mode and the 392 rear axle ratio, I'm in two wheel drive. So this should be the best way to launch the zero to 60 with a trailer. The trailer I'm using today is this Iron Bull tandem axle car hauler flat deck. And on it is our 1965 F100 we're using as ballast altogether. This trailer and the Ford weigh about 8,100 pounds, which pushes closer to the limits of both of these full-size SUV and truck. Here I go. A little bit of spin. This is a mile above sea level, by the way. This is where we always do our testing. There it is, 16.29. Generally speaking, uh, using past experience, and we've ran dozens of trucks on this particular test, I would say when you're towing about 8,000 pounds like I am now, you're more than double your zero to 60 time. So we'll find out exactly what this truck does empty, but 16.29 is the time to beat for the big Grand Wagoneer. We interrupt this video for a special message from our sponsors at Home Health. Did you know that testosterone levels have dropped over the generations? Our father's generation had 25% higher testosterone levels than ours. Today, over 30 million men in the United States have testosterone levels that have dropped, affecting their daily lives. If you're tired, and you can't concentrate well, or you have to pour yourself an extra cup of coffee, your testosterone may be to blame. And it's not our fault. There are many factors to take into account, including environmental factors. The good news is that Hone Health can help. Optimizing your testosterone can lead to increased energy, increased muscle mass, more focus, and a better mood. Hone makes it easy to get tested and get treated for low testosterone, all from the comfort of your home. Now, I'm no medical expert, but Hone Health is and they'll be with you every step of the way. Just collect your sample and mail it back. You'll then video chat with a doctor who will recommend a personalized treatment plan based on your results. Treatment options include FDA approved medications and everything gets delivered to your door. Order Hone's easy to use test today to learn your testosterone levels. For a limited time only, viewers can get an at-home test and a doctor's consult for $45. Click on the link in the description below or go to honehealth.com slash TFL to order yours now. All right, so I will be using 87 octane for the Ram 1500, that's the recommended fuel and I'll be using premium 91 recommended fuel for the Grand Wagoneer. But let's uh, fill up the Ram first, take it on the highway and find out exactly what MPG it gets when towing. All right, here we go, 87. Octane for the Ram. We also have 85 octane because it's high elevation Colorado. So we have 
lower octane levels as well. But we'll be using recommended fuel to make it all proper. As always, I'm using the double click method. Uh, we fill up, let it rest about 30 seconds just to make sure it settles. Of course, we don't want to overfill and keep pumping fuel into it, but just we want to get an even fill. There it is, it's topped off. Time to get on the road. I'm gonna reset my trip meter. Here we go. And I'll let you know exactly what the trucks say and also what the pump says. So this test is laid out this way. First, I'm gonna do a highway MPG loop in the Ram towing the trailer. And of course the Grand Wagoneer is following me on the same exact loop. My cameraman Ian is driving it. So same time, same loop. For this big boy, it's a premium SUV. Of course, it's more expensive. This is a Grand Wagoneer, and I'm using premium fuel because that's recommended. And see, just as a reminder, it says 91 plus octane right here. Alrighty, premium. Capless system once again. Nice. Yeah, okay. Just to be fair, I'm using the same method for all of our fill-ups in both, of course, the SUV and the truck. Uh, I'm gonna wait 30 seconds and top off. Of course, the Grand Wagoneer has a fully digital dash. And here's the trip info. I'm gonna reset it. Bam! This is gonna be approximately between 40 and 45 mile loop. I'll show you exactly GPS distance, speed, everything, so you can see exactly all the parameters I'm using. And I'm gonna be going at 70 miles per hour on the highway. I'm using the older version of the altimeter app on my phone. I downloaded it years ago. It's telling me my speed, my elevation, and also it's tracking my distance driven using GPS. This is the best way um, I know how to track this loop. Uh, speed limit here is 75. This is I-25 north of Denver. Oh boy, the Ram had to use a lot of RPM to get up to speed. And right now I'm about to set the cruise control. Because this is a big horn, Ram 1500, it does have a backcountry package four-wheel drive package but because it's a more of a basic truck it does not have adaptive cruise of course Ram offers adaptive cruise system in other models higher trim levels and other packages uh, for this Ram 1500 but as such this truck right here uh, does not have it there I am I'm cruising at 70 miles per hour this Ram does not have air suspension either but it does have some other tricks up its sleeve for fuel efficiency. For example, the deployable chin spoiler in the front. So let me go about 20 miles, turn around, and give you an update. Here's how the Ram is set up for towing. It does have a tow haul mode right here. You have trailer steering for backup assist, which is a clever feature, which actually the Grand Wagoneer currently does not offer. And then the brake controller is here, very easy to reach in the center and you can control your gain and of course the brake trailer brake actuation as well i'm coming up to my turnaround point and i'm gonna show you uh, at speed while i'm rolling on a fairly flat piece of highway the interior cabin noise level i think it's very important especially on the longer trip while towing uh, it's really nice to know how loud or quiet your truck really is. So here we go. 62.1 decibels. That's very, very quiet. That was about 2100 RPM, just cruising at 70 miles an hour. Uh, so yeah, that's anything below 70 decibels is very quiet. 
right now I'm probably talking to you at about 85 decibels. So that's a really good result for the Ram. I wonder if the Grand Wagoneer will be even quieter. We'll have to find out. My MPG meter is currently saying 9.7. Once again, maintaining between 65 and 70 miles an hour according to the construction zones and speed limits. So yeah, 9.7 or 9.8 uh, is less than half of the highway rating of this truck, but that makes sense because I am hauling a lot of weight. So my average speed was very close to 60 miles an hour, which is very typical for any highway trip. And also this loop, 9.5 MPG is my result. In tow haul mode, the e-torque system with uh, this smaller Hemi engine, uh, of course, was not helping because at higher speeds and in tow haul mode, um, it, there is no effect that it creates as far as I can tell. Alrighty, the pump will tell us the truth. I expect the um, trip meters to be very close, but let's see what happens. Here we go for the Ram 87 octane once again. The Ram offers several different fuel tank sizes. Anything from around 24 to 31 to 33. But the Grand Wagoneer only has one fuel tank size, at least right now, 26 and a half gallons. So it's kind of comparable, truck for truck. Let's see what the actual result is. Four point nine five. Let's calculate. GPS distance was forty-eight point one miles. I'm gonna divide by four point nine five. You're probably guessing the result already. Nine point seven. The truck said nine and a half. So this is very close and kind of makes sense for this trailer size and this V8 truck. This is quite impressive. In the Grand Wagoneer, it just said 21.7, now it's switched to 21.6. Still, this is way above the 18 MPG highway rating that the EPA gives this big truck. So let me... Um, let me figure out what it does at the pump. All right, the Grand Wagoneer's turn. Let's see what it does. Yeah, if it got 21 or so MPG on a highway on this trip like this, going between 70 and 65 miles per hour, um, and it has a 26.5 gallon tank. Okay, well there you have it, 1.929. Let's do the calculation. If this is true, this would be something really special. And uh, the other reason why this may be so good is because this big engine can run in four-cylinder mode under light load. Oh my gosh, 24.9? I'm super surprised, 24.9 empty in this big humongous Grand Wagoneer on the highway that's pretty awesome as always when towing we use Gen Y hitches like this heavy-duty height adjustable hitch and the Grand Wagoneer hookup was pretty simple actually there is an actual access panel here that I removed three little uh, thumb screws that's all it needs then to hook up the chains actually this is very easy very easy to reach I don't have to climb underneath the Grand Wagoneer has air suspension it leveled itself out there is no suspension squat the camera system on the inside also helped out oh yeah also breakaway cable which is right here Pretty easy, actually.
All right, it's time to put this big V8 and it's 471 horsepower, 455 pound foot of torque to the test with a big load. So we already know this SUV can be quick with no trailer, but how quick is it with? So I'm in tow haul mode. I'm going to be running on the same uh, basically piece of pavement here. I'm going to brake torque it just a little because I have full time four wheel drive. So hopefully it will give me a good push. There it is. Bam. 13.68 This is my first opportunity to tow for real with a new Grand Wagoneer uh, on the highway, longer distance to get a feeling for it, see how it does at higher speeds I'm gonna run the exact same loop as I did with the Ram 1500 It's a, exactly 48.1 miles and I'm gonna set the cruise control system to uh, 70 miles an hour and do some miles, put some miles down. All right, so I'm in the merge lane. I'm about to get on the highway and set my cruise control system. I do have adaptive cruise in this case. And you might be wondering uh, what well, what is the pricing like and what are some of the options on a brand new uh, Grand Wagoneer and Wagoneer? The Wagoneer for 2022, which is slightly less luxurious version of this SUV, starts at just under $70,000 before destination charges. And that's available with a two-wheel drive model as well and a 5.7 liter V8. Now, the Grand Wagoneer starts at closer to about $87,000, $88,000. Uh, this Series 1 is $91,000 the way you see it here. There's also Series 2, Obsidian, which is kind of a blacked out version, and Series 3. And it goes up all the way to about $105,000 if you wanted to check every box for options. But I do have a panoramic sunroof here, luxurious seats, I have my massage feature available. and. Like I was saying, up to 10,000 pounds of towing capability. I also have air suspension, which in this case, for this SUV, it's one of the best air suspensions I've ever tested. And I would say it's a little bit more comfy ride in this one when I compare it against the, the Ram 1500. Uh, and that's natural. I mean, yes, that Ram, uh, the way you see it here, retails for around 56,000. This is way more than that, but you're paying more and you're also getting more. So let me get going a little bit further. I'll do a sound check for the interior for you. Turn around, go back to the pump. The Grand Wagoneer actually is set up properly for towing. I have tow haul mode. Uh, I will be using that whenever I'm towing. It also has an integrated trailer brake controller which is a little bit hidden here by my right knee, but I actually like that it's on the right side of the steering wheel. I can control my gain. I can increase it. I'm gonna be using about six gain, six out of 10. And here's my manual trailer brake override if I need it. I do have all these camera views on the Grand Wagoneer as well. I have kind of a closer, well, I can look in the front as well but I can have several different views in the back, 360 included, or up close, I can actually zoom in on the hitch and check it out. So there we have it. Now I need to see if I can readjust the trailer towing controls. So let me go to settings. Because I'm towing 8,100 pounds, I would consider that heavy electric. So let me switch to that. If I was about 5,000 pounds or less, I might use light electric mode. Heavy electric is for heavier trailers and I can also adjust my gain appropriately. I'm now at the point where I can give you a sound check of the cabin, so let me do that now. 
62.2. You know, that's nearly identical and very, very quiet. Nearly identical to what I got on the Ram. That's very impressive from both. Actually, the more kind of a basic trim of the Ram, that's also very, very impressive. And of course, here uh, with my sunroof shade closed, this is kind of the quietest I can make this big SUV. All right, so let me get uh, turned around, go south again, and I will get to the fuel pump and let you know exactly what, how it did. Right now, the trip meter is telling me 11.3 in the Grand Wagoneer. So a bit better actually than in the Ram. But once again, the fuel pump will have to tell me uh, more precisely. As I'm coming up towards the pump, here's another interesting spec. Both of these, the Ram 1500 four-wheel drive and this Grand Wagoneer right here, have almost identical payload ratings, which I'm impressed by. Uh, it's 1400 pounds. Well, by itself, it's not very impressive. But what is impressive is that this fully, well, almost fully optioned luxury SUV with, you know, with three rows of seats has that good payload rating for a four-wheel drive model. Um, so I, I think that's a good number. Um, it is still a very heavy SUV, but for usable payload to tow a trailer like this with 800 pound uh, tongue load and also carrying people in the cab here, um, I think that's a very usable number. Here's what the Grand Wagoneer is telling me, 10.8 mpg. A same distance, same loop, same route, approximately the same average speed of about 60 miles an hour. Um, I was just sitting here for another extra minute, uh, just waiting. So yeah, let's get uh, to the result. All right, I cannot wait to get the result because I expected them to be about the same uh, because the SUV is heavier, maybe a little bit worse. So far, the SUV seems to be doing better. All right, let's get to the number. Once again, we're using, I'm using the same pump, number 12, on each one of these loops. So I'm trying to take the pump and other variables out of the equation. Okie dokie, once again, 30 seconds, uh, way to top off. <laughs> it's gonna be very close very close let's see how it compares to the Ram that was uh, the result that Ram got now let's do this for 48.1 miles divide by 4.896 equals 9.8 so it's almost identical and it's actually this is a little bit worse than what the computer was telling me in the in the Grand Wagoneer. But towing, same weight, same trailer, same highway, almost identical fuel efficiency. The Ram is showing 20.2 mpg uh, unladen on the highway versus what 21.5, 21.6 that the Grand Wagoneer showed. Let's see what the pump says. Should be close to 20, but here's the question. Will the big SUV actually beat it? I think it's very likely. All right, there it is. Sorry, I'm wearing my hoodie. It's getting actually really quite cold. This is the result of the pump that we got unladen in the Grand Wagoneer. Now this is the result for the Ram, 48.1 divided by 2.353 equals 20.4. So actually the trip meter was almost on the money and unfortunately, well, according to our data, the SUV was quite a lot more efficient when it was empty, uh, but still not the terrible result but 22 is the rating 
from the EPA on this truck. So it's a little bit less than the EPA rating. Alrighty, I'm in the Ram. There's no trailer behind me. So let me do this acceleration test. There is no special sport mode. And let's see, just gonna brake torque it a little bit. Good takeoff, just a smidge of wheel spin. Bam! I think that's a pretty good result for a 5.7. 7.63 seconds, 0 to 60. Uh, once again, a mile above sea level, you gotta remember that. So subtract a second, maybe a second and a half almost for sea level times. So that's quite impressive actually for this four wheel drive crew cab. All right, I am in the new Grand Wagoneer. I'm not towing right now. I still want to show you the 0 to 60 because I have 6.4 liters of displacement and I have sport mode. I have 392 rear differential. I have full time four wheel drive and uh, I have a solo DL for measuring speed. So let me try this. Woo! This really takes off great. Oh my goodness. Guys, take a look at this, 646. This big SUV, which is loaded with luxury features, weighs about 6,300 pounds. And with this engine, and the way it's set up, it really uh, launches really well. And 6.4 seconds at a mile above sea level means it could be a second quicker, or maybe a little bit more quick at sea level so this is very impressive I don't know about you but I was surprised by the results especially that empty 24.9 mpg that the Grand Wagoneer put in today so here's the final question truck or an SUV version of the same truck pretty much uh, which one would you get well today the Grand Wagoneer showed really great 0 to 60 performance efficiency that was on par or better than the truck but it is $35,000 more so because of that 35 grand is a huge amount of money you can buy a whole nother vehicle for that I would pick the truck but if you're looking at the Grand Wagoneer versus its competitors the Escalade the Navigator I think I would take the Grand Wagoneer over all of them any day of the week let me know what you think in the comments below and go back to tfltruck.com for all the latest news, views, and real world 0 to 60 and MPG highway reviews.